Thank you so much, David. Uh, well, I want to thank Frank and me for this opportunity to talk about my research, and I want to help uh, uh, thank all staff to help me get this slide work. <laughs> and um, why well, I try to, uh, you see, this is used to be two talks, so I would like to divide my talk to two part two. You know, uh, the first part is really talk about the TBS and the breast cancer, and the second part is really is try to respond uh, one for you see IP, uh, IFA from uh, uh, Cancer Institute, uh, um, um, National Cancer Institute, see if we can work together on the links so, uh, 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 for respond this uh, ground up, uh, get a ground application. So uh, my lab, I'm a clinical genetist, so uh, my lab is kind of pretty complicated. This is ch just try to give you an overview and what's going on in my lab. And the later I start with, you see, uh, as a clinical genetics, I start few rare genetic syndrome. You see TBS5 and the TBS3. And the TBS5 initially was found to associate with a breast cancer and then with a congenital heart disease. TBS3 caused one of a very rare genetic syndrome called Hormon Mammary Syndrome. If a woman has a mutation of the, this transcription factor, they don't have a mammogram. So this is a very important gene for normal mammogram development growth. Uh, but the disease is uh, very rare. So what I try to do is uh, really apply what we learn from rare disease to common condition. Okay, so obviously, other side of coin is, you see, uh, is TBS3 associated with breast cancer. And they, so, so that's how we link, I start with, uh, breast cancer. And they, so uh, another big branch for my lab is you see uh, optic atrophy. And the link, so this is a, a gene uh, coded by nuclear genome, but you see functioning mitochondria. And they, so, uh, and they recently found this uh, OPA one. Okay, so try to figure out this year if OPA1, um, OPA1 is a one for gene coded by nuclear genome but function mitochondria. And then so if a mutation for OPA1 gene will affect the, you see mitochondria function. And they so, and then recently we also do a lot of next gene sequence use the new technology and they include some of the new d disease. And then so I will not have the time to talk about one of the projects recently we we'll work on which is to use a new technology called rain dance technology and how can we detect a mutation 142 gene which is associated with, uh, which is associated with cancer. Uh, but, but if anyone interested in you see next gene sequence probably we can talk about uh, uh, later. Uh, so, so just give you a little bit background you see that you see what a TBS three gene does, and the like, so I, as I say, the mutation for TBS three causes one from very rare genetic syndrome called Arnold memory syndrome, which is uh, Arnold means a person, you know, pink finger here, you have a defect here, and you you don't have a breast cancer, a breast you see in a woman, and uh, if you have mutation, and if you knock out this gene in mice, and this is very pretty much mimic what you see in human. And then so this is you see a homozygous knockout. If you knock a both copy of a gene, you don't have a even tiny tiny memory but completely disappear. And if you knock out one copy of a TBS3 uh, mice, your breast look very small, but you see you can still see. So it's very similar to human situation. And then so again this is in human, this is autosomal dominant condition. And the woman they have a mutation, you still have another copy which is a wild type. Only one copy was uh, being mutated. And uh, they so, as I say, I want to apply what we learn from red disease to common condition. This is, a, you see, we collaborate with uh, 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 Joe Gray at uh, um, uh, uh, UCSF, and then so he sent us a huge panel for you see a cell line, which is about 30, 30 cell line. Which the first thing we want to see what if you lost function from TBS3, you don't have a mammogram. Do you see overexpress in a breast cancer? Mm -hmm. And this is, this is a, just a few, uh, you see the normal uh, non malignant uh, cell line, and uh, you can see many of the cell line highly express TBS3. And, uh, 
And the then we can uh, uh, transfer to, uh, I think I'm missing a picture here. No, oh, no. Uh, then we transfer to human uh, human condition. You know, see, want, we want to see what the real uh, breast cancer. Uh, do we see anything here? And they, so this is a collaboration with uh, uh, Hoda's group, and uh, you can see uh, this is a kind of section you look at. You see a, a, a malignant cell versus you see the epithelial cell. Uh, you can see that indeed uh, you see a malignant cell highly expressed. And uh, this being ver this result being verified by many groups and uh, many other different cancer. You know, this is a, TBS is not just affect breast cancer. You see, of our fact, you see prostate cancer, many other cancer, and the, which are already uh, recent publication. But uh, we are the first one link TBS rate to uh, cancer. And uh, someone to try to looking for uh, biomarker, you see, from uh, for uh, ovarian cancer and then and uh, uh, breast cancer. They did. You see a uh, tender mass spectrometry analysis used the serum. Look at serum protein, and they found that you see that breast cancer. You see this is the control here, and then breast cancer. The next you see, see that in serum you have significant elevation of the TBS3, and then so the potential use this. Uh, you see serum marker is uh, for diagnosis. Uh, so we move to uh, you see mechanism. What, how you see the TBS3 may affect you see breast cancer, and it's uh, one of the uh, one we are uh, working on, uh, and there's uh, one paper published, which is another T box gene. We found the TBS T box gene associated with uh, you see HDAC, and uh, this is uh, you see HDAC is involved, you know, uh, chromosome modification. You can s imagine here. The DNA in your nuclear is not uh, just free folding around. You see the wrap around, you see this uh, um, uh, uh, histone, and then form a very tiny, tight structure. Okay, you see, uh, you can imagine, you see DNA is negative charge. Okay, and then so that's one modification for histone is called uh, uh, acetyl group, uh, acetylation. If you have a Neg acetyl group, this is negative charge, and then so DNA is negative charge, you will have more space, and then gene tends to be likely transcribed. And if you remove this, you see the negative charge, and the DNA will wrap around your protein uh, tighter, and then so that will be a, 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 a nice thing. And so we get a panel of, you see, uh, HDAC, and then so which is a um, we do a co-immunoprecitation co and see if indeed the uh, TBS3 intact any, with any of them. And then what we find is the TBS3 intact with a multiple uh, HDAC. You see HDAC1, HDAC2, HDAC3, and then so, uh, also HDAC5 here. Uh, but not with 4, 6, 7, and, um, and the 9. Um, so what we did, we tried to, at this time, we tried to map what you see interaction domain and then so if you for example um, while this is a HDAC5 if you delete about 60 amino acids in HDAC5 you completely abolish this uh, uh, interaction so that was that's interesting and then so I should mention HDAC inhibitor being it has been in, in clinical trial to for cancer therapy include the breast cancer and the some of are pretty advanced already and then we further map that he, uh, you see the interaction domain of uh, HDAC5 and, uh, and then so you can see if you have a deletion here you, you lost the interaction here and uh, this is a pretty much you see the interaction domain of uh, HDAC here and about 60 amino acids and also um, for TBS3 also you see we mapped to about 60 amino acids and then so um, one thing that you see that we know TBS3 regulate one for gene called P19 Okay, which is in a P53 pathway. Okay, P3, uh, P19 regular uh, MDM2 and the link in, uh, uh, interfere at uh, uh, P53. And uh, so one thing was try to do is you see, okay, this is a P19 uh, promoter, you see, re linked to uh, Luciferous. And then if you over express TBS3, and then you can see that indeed TBS3 can inhibit this uh, promoter activity. And uh, but uh, you see, if you add a different concentration of uh, HDAC, and uh, you can most likely reverse this interaction, and then reverse pH P19. So that's a potential. You see, a mechanism use uh, HDAC inhibitor. You can uh, use uh, interfere this uh, TBS3 HDAC interaction. And the potentially develop a treatment. 
And like so if we can further map down the region of a TBS3 interaction, uh, of TBS3 domain and the HLEC domain, and then maybe we can make a oligo, and then so you will interfere this, uh, more specifically interfere this interaction that could be used as a, uh, and as a therapy, uh, therapeutic purpose. And they, so we also, beside the knockout, we also, uh, uh, we also work on the transgenic mouse. And then so question is, you see, what you, we know, okay, TBS3 is always best TBS in breast cancer. Doesn't mean you see have anything to do cause breast cancer, all right? And they so and they so could be TBS is one of the factor, but not sufficient to uh, to cause uh, the disease. And they so we use the one of a system called pet on system, which is transgenic mice, and they so you have a promoter driving uh, uh, TBS3 expression. Downstream, you you have you see the reporter. You see we we link to one of the reporter here. You see uh, which is uh, uh, oh, actually here. Uh, yeah. Okay. So t this is a TBS. This is a promoter here. And if you have you see the uh, uh, in Python system, and then we'll, you see without the tetracycline, you have a, you replace the pro promoter here. You not have a trend, TBS3. But if if you add a tetra tetracycline and then this will be moved away and then so will transcribe. And then so like downstream we put one for reporter you see which is uh, 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 luciferous. So you don't have to sacrifice the mice so you can see the like, gene expression. This is exactly what we see here. Uh, you can see this is a, you see without the tetracycline you don't see a gene expression and the length of added tetracycline you can see the gene is expressed. And the length of, but you see interesting thing is you see the uh, I think this is a fourth um, a mammogram the equivalent of position. Uh, but of course, you see the TBS3 also expressing other tissue. And, uh, and then so you can see uh, uh, either tetracycline uh, uh, T TBS3 um, expression is highly uh, expressed very higher. While we look at the mice, we see we, for almost two years, we haven't seen any tumor for this uh, mice. So that's, you see, give you a conclusion, you see, this just TBS3 is not sufficient to, uh, to cause the cancer. But indeed, if you overstress TBS3, you see the hyperproliferation of your CM and mammogram. This is, you see, top panel is really pretty much a little bit on the lane and uh, compared to a uh, 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 bottom panel. And uh, you can see this is a uh, different age. You can see this is, uh, I think, a uh, 10 weeks. And uh, you can see that you can overstress TBS3, which you, which is treated with a dorsicycline, you can see that the much higher, uh, you see, uh, memory bad is much higher. This is about seven weeks here, and then you can see the significant difference. So, so conclusion from here is, you see, TBS3 is indeed required for proliferation, but not, uh, you see, oncogenes per se, and then so maybe have to work with other gene together, and then such as the uh, PPT3, that's uh, one possibility, I saw, as I mentioned uh, early, uh, because uh, TBS3 regular P19 and the length of interfere PPT3 pathway. And uh, this is uh, just, you see, uh, uh, overexpressed versus not overexpressed pregnant, pregnant uh, uh, mice. And, uh, and they saw kind of interesting, you see, from the environmental point of view, and uh, force ma what I showed you earlier is the force membrane. Force membrane can is considered different, considered different <coughs> mechanism compared to other other uh, mammogram. Even you see you have your your uh, your mice, the different mammogram is in the control by different molecular pathway. But in our case, we are not only see a force mammogram, we also see this is a first mammogram. This is a uh, this is a, I, I don't know which one. Is this is third one? You can see, and the then not only affect you see force, it also affect other. So that's the kind of interesting thought. So Suggest that maybe different mechanism, and the length of we, uh, we because we have a transgenic mice, so we can we analyze. You see the uh, mammoth stem cell. You know that I, I think everyone agree that the mammoth stem cell exists in human in mice, and the length of we use uh, you see a fact we do a, a CD uh, twenty four and the CD twenty nine uh, 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 studying, and the length of we see over, if we overexpress TBS three. And you probably get a, a, about forty percent of increased number of uh, of uh, uh, mammoth stem cell. This is a normal <coughs> mammoth stem cell. And uh, so uh, this is you see the uh, 
from that point of view, you know, the TBS3 probably is important for regeneration as you know, membrane researcher. And when we prepare, we, when we try to publish our paper, and another paper come out, you see, this is a paper published in PNS, and then so, let's study a TBS3 and the in, uh, let, let's study of uh, the breast cancer mammal stem, uh, breast cancer uh, stem cell. Okay, what I did, you see, use, uh, you see a, a breast cancer cell line, you can treat, you can, you can see the mammosphere formation in use a cell line. But you, you, you see, if you deep, treat the cell line with different stuff, you, do, you get a different percentage number for mammosphere. Okay, if you treat MCF cell line with estrogen, you will see that you increase the number of mammosphere. Okay, that's not a surprise. And then so, and because the many of uh, you see estrogen rece uh, uh, receptor positive cell line, and then you treat it with estrogen, and then you may have a stimulate population of uh, this, that. And then so, and then look at mechanism why you see estrogen receptor can, you see estrogen treatment can increase, you see a stem cell. And then so what I did is I found you see the FGF is downstream of uh, you see uh, uh, estrogen, which is already known. And the surprise thing is the uh, FGF regulate by t uh, regulate TBS3 and the length cause you see this um, increase of uh, 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 you see uh, uh, cancer stem cell. Okay, this is the one you see here. This is a red one you see is treated with uh, you see a uh, hormone, and then you can see the mammosphere number. Uh, you see a CD44 and the CD24 positive cell increase significantly. And uh, but if you knock down this TBS3, you can see that dramatic drop. And then so this is, you see, endogenous. You didn't, you didn't need to treat cell for anything. Endogenous, you see, you can see, if you knock down the TBS3, you will see a significant drop. And then so, you, uh, you see, this is a t SRNA you knock down here. You use a multiple cell line. You see, include, uh, you see, the MCF7 and the some uh, uh, 3, uh, 159, etc. And then so, but if you, oh, you know, on other and if you always express TBS3, you see the increased number. So this is pretty much very consistent what we found in normal mammosphere. And like so I, I don't have the time to show you uh, the data. And like so one of another big project in lab is doing uh, work on TBS3 and the embryo stem cell developmental. And this is the development, uh, di uh, differentiation. And uh, which is founded by uh, NCI and uh, for a student. And then we found, you see, um, um, when you, uh, you see uh, uh, TBS3 is uh, very important for, uh, you see, a normal embryo stem cell differentiation. So the TBS3 is involved embryo stem cell differentiation, normal mammal stem cell, and also cancer stem, uh, breast, uh, breast cancer stem cell. So we are trying to still sort out, you see, a lot of mechanisms to try to look in for genome-wide uh, uh, the expression, uh, expression. So from my part, you see, I, uh, is from this part, and I can summarize, you see pretty much, we found the TBS3 is associated with uh, breast cancer, and it's overexpressed, and the which is uh, being verified by many different cancer. And the look, if you look at the database too, you know, you can look at, the, you see a gene expression profile, many of the cancer cells are overexpressed TBS3, and the mechanistically, it seems the regulator, P, one of the mechanisms, I cannot say all, one of the mechanisms is regulate P19. That's a possibility we can develop a, a treatment, a therapy. And, uh, and uh, in terms of uh, uh, stem cell, this is a just study, and so we, we're going to continue work on that. And, uh, okay, so I'm going to switch gear a little bit for about my talk, which is really we try to talk today, and I so uh, try to generate some discussion, and then we try to collaborate with that. This is the stuff one of my patients, you see. And like, so, as you probably know, because besides, uh, you see, uh, work as a clinical genetics, I'm uh, serving as a lab director for metamide and molecular diagnostic lab. And uh, we receive all the tests, you see, for mitochondria, national and international. Okay, so we are one of the primary first center. So one of the patients treat me interesting. Is, uh, you see, the patient is, you don't, want to re you don't have to read all these things. Just tell you, this is a very typical presentation of uh, mitochondrial disease, this patient. You have an elevated lactate level and all the stuff. And you know, so muscle weakness and uh, is everything. But meanwhile, he was, she was also found that has, you see, a breast cancer. 
So, and then we look at the mitochondrial genome, we found the, you see a, a, a mutation. Uh, but like, so this is, you see, the, the question is that what, whether you see really mitochondrial genome mutation has anything to do with the, the breast cancer, or this is just coincidence. And like, so a lot of data suggests you see that cancer cell line or cancer tissue, indeed you see the mitochondrial genome mut mutated. But you see, again, same story as earlier I say, oh, why well you see the mitochondrial genome mutated, but it doesn't mean you cause the disease, right? You see, you may, you see the one for, you, your mutation just could be just around for you see the uh, uh, in a passenger side, you know, because you see you have a cancer and you have mutation. Doesn't mean you see your, your mutation has anything to do with, uh, uh, the one difficult thing for mitochondrial disease is, uh, you know, in, uh, I think you see in uh, most of cancer field, if you're looking for the nuclear genome, like what Eva is doing, if you look at P P53, you can just knock, on, knock down a P53, see if you see any cancer. But uh, mitochondria is way more complicated because you see the nuclear genome, you segregate. You see you have two co uh, copies, one from maternal realm, one from uh, paternal realm. You separate, you see that to, you see next generation, and then so, uh, you see, you follow the Mendelian segregation, but in mitochondria is not. Mitochondria, you have, you see, first only maternal mitochondria contribute to the disease, uh, to, to your, you only receive a mitochondria from your mom, not from your dad. Because you see, why you, you probably you know the fertilization, you know, last part of a sperm is cut off, you see, which is the whole mitochondria is there. And, uh, so, so, but you see, it doesn't follow the Mendelian segregation, and they so make a study very complicated. And then so, another thing is you see, um, and uh, you see, okay, for that patient, I told you, you see, okay, you, you see, uh, we found a mutation in one of the ND1, ND2 gene. Okay, this is, you see, this is a fibroblast cell, and uh, also from blood, we found a mutation. And then we found a tumor, and then which is a, a higher, high percentage. But again, this tumor, even this tumor, we don't, we just take a whole tumor, and then so it's include, it still include the normal cell there. You 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 you're probably aware, and then so this is a, a go to si second part of my my talk. And so how can we sort out if this mutation has anything to do with the cancer? That's a one of a quick big question. And then so you can imagine, you see mitochondria that is very complicated and the beside that you make your from uh, you see you make ATP pretty much a majority of ATP you need for daily activity is uh, from mitochondria and the so but you see is mitochondria is a place you see like a five place you generate some heat and you also produce some smoke okay the smoke is a free radical on the length which can damage your mitochondria and make your nuclear and uh, so the question is so uh, and the length of disease is per, you see pretty much everywhere. And then so you can you can imagine every single tissue you need a mitochondria. And then so uh, you can have uh, you see you're making uh, I, I know you see Beckman Institute. You see some people try to measure you see the NIDH and the uh, concern and also see how to try to see how you without the invest procedure and look at if you see mitochondria is functional. This is a pretty much is uh, something if you can look at uh, um, NIDH and then so ATP or you know uh, free radical that would be very, very nice. And then so the mutation you see mitochondria is uh, very diverse. You see pretty much you see that uh, there's many mutations will be reported social risk, risk cancer. But again this is only a social risk cancer. Nobody so far, I, to my knowledge, really can really approve this is the cause of the disease, and uh, so that's one 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 issue. And I think so you see that in come talk about can cancer, I say that you see your star one for you see cell is like you see that you see let's say you can refer this is the first cancer cell or beginning of cancer cell, and you div you divide the cell divided, and then percentage of mutation and it's kind of random. You see some of it will be completely normal, some you don't have a mutation at all, some of it will have, you see, the 100% of the mutation. And the cell is, you see, you are, your body, you know, you are, if you inherit your, your, this is your mom's mitochondria here, 
and then so each part of your body can be completely different. Even cell next to each other could be different. Okay, so that would be some of the interesting could be you see associated with the cancer root because you see maybe some clone you know you have reached some percentage and then that clone will expand and also cause cancer. You see that's that's something uh, we should uh, talk about it. And also just tell you even even the same individual you have a different tissue you have a different number. Okay, so some of them, you see this disease caused by called heteroplasmy. And uh, heteroplasmy is like what I show you. You have a mixture, you have a normal and a abnormal. You have mutant and the wild type. And then so some are caused by homoplasmy, just 100% they mutated. So, um, so, so another difficult part, as I told you, you see that you, this is not a nuclear genome. You cannot knock down the gene and then so look at function. Do you cause the cancer, etc.? Okay, so why you see, for example, if I have a cancer, you don't have a cancer, and I found a mutation in my body, uh, in my country genome, but uh, how do you know it's because that mutation caused the disease, or you because your nuclear genome and the different from me? You see, your 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 nuclear genome from is different from my nuclear genome. Right? So one thing you have to do is make sure you see you are you talk about apple, you compare apple to apple. Uh, you see, and origin to origin. And the next one technology is to develop a cyber uh, cell. That's exactly what they did for our patient. I just show you. Okay. How we do that? Okay, so you see the sum of, uh, you know, this is a, you see, one per cell, which we use, you can remove the nuclear, which is, a, you see, add some, uh, you see, DNA replication, nu nuclear DNA replication reagent. You see, actinomycin is one, so you see, you can remove the nuclear, nuclear. You just have the mitochondria. Another one, you can just um, remove all mitochondria genome. What are you, how you do it? Because the mitochondria genome is a very sensitive to EB, uh, ethylene bromide. Which is a very common use agent in, in your in your in your laboratory. Okay, so if you add a EB to the culture, and the mitochondrial gene genome is going to die. Okay, so so you see, you now on one hand, one cell you have a mitochondria, another one you have a nuclear. Okay, so if I want to study a mitochondria, like what a, my patient, I get to remove my mitochondria from my, uh, my, my nuclear, my cell, and I keep my mitochondria and I fuse these two cells and you form a cyber cell. And then so, as I told you, if you have a colony like this, you pick up a different colony. Different colony, the new, all cells now, nuclear are same, right? You don't have, you see, use the same nuclear. Only different is the mitochondria. Because you see, different colony, you have different percentage of uh, mutation. Some of you see completely normal, some of it completely mutated. And uh, this is exactly what we did. You see the, you see, uh, oh, okay, just tell you, okay, this is, you see, I feel, after I fuse the cell, and then I can pick up a different colony. And uh, this is exactly show you here. Well, like this one, this is a completely wild type. This cell, this colony is pretty much no mutation in here. And uh, on the other hand, this is a majority of them mutated here. And even you, some of them, you can reach 100% of the mutated. And you want to compare the different colony here. Same, you see, only difference is the nuclear type, one nuclear type difference, this nuclear type difference. And the way, but a different percentage. Some are wild type, some are mutant. And so that, that's how we did. Okay, first thing we do is some like a growth, you know. And then so, uh, well, this is, you see, normal in the, uh, Situation we culture cell in uh, glucose, right? You see, but you see, I'm going to show you how this environment can affect the cell growth so much different. Okay, this is a wild type. You can see that grow much faster, right? Compared to you see mutant here. Well, that doesn't make a sense to us see, because you see we are just we try to talk about different thing, right? We want to know if this mutation cause cancer. If you, if you talk about cancer, you should grow. You see, mutant should grow faster than the length of well, happy should go slow, right? But this is the only difference is the, the environment. As I told you that in in a normal cell culture, you you see you if your DMEM medium, you have glucose. In that condition, you see the cell hardly need mitochondria because you see mainly because your medium is too rich. 
you see, you, you, they have enough of good, uh, good energy to survive, but I don't need to use, use the mitochondria, and I, so I, I can show you. But you see that, the meanwhile, we can also do the, I told you, you see, the only difference is, uh, okay, we look at cell, cell, you see, in the glucose medium, you look at cell cycle, there's no difference. You look at reactive oxygen species, and actually it's not higher, even low. So that's the one, one thing you see uh, kind of interesting. You look at respiration, you see how much oxygen this cell con consume. Again, I told you, you see that all of this cell line, only different nuclear sign, mitochondrial genome, all sign, you start to have one nucleotide. Okay, that's a different percentage of, uh, of, uh, of uh, mutation. This is a wild type. You see, wild type consume more oxygen. Okay, that's the only thing you can tell. And then, so, and then, but you see, as I said, you see, you have different percentage of mutation, right? I want to see, uh, like, you put a soft agar to colony formation. Like, soft agar is quite different from your cell culture. You know, this you, nutrition all is aspect. And then you come with oxygen too. And then you can see, I don't know if you can see it here, this is, uh, uh, because this is a very tiny colony. I, can you guys see it here? Okay, only this is one have a mutation. Only this colony can survive in soft agar. From a colony, you see that this is a, um, I don't know, can you guys see a colony? Okay, so you can imagine this is a all in the same environment. The only difference is you see the, the single nucleotide change. Let's give you some hint. You see, maybe you see this is a, this is a, what well, medium can make a difference and like so, and uh, can you may able to uh, look at uh, what? Okay, so that one thing that we try to change is the medium. Okay, and how can we use mitochondria as a as a functional? You see, you you have to depend on your mitochondria. Okay, why if you change it? <coughs> you see, uh, glycol, uh, uh, glucose to lactose. This is very well now. You see, if you change the medium from glucose to lactose you must use a, you see, mitochondria. Okay, so you must use anaerobic uh, metabolic and the length. So this is, a, you see, the result, you change, simply change the medium, make a other way around, complete difference. That's what you see that, uh, you see, you can see, okay, if, if we, this is a, uh, this is a mutant, mutant uh, mitochondria here, and they can survive better, much like, better than you see a uh, uh, wild type. And then so you can see also this is a just a look at apoptosis and then see the cell there. And then so one thing I was not believe what the count the cell. I say, oh, why you how do you count the cell? And I say, well, why do you mix two? You see the cell. And then so you because I know the genotype, you start 50 50 percent, half and a half. You mix them. And after few generation, and see, do, do you see that one cell grow much faster than another? And then indeed, this is a conf this is a confirm. And then so and the same thing as you see in uh, count, you know. But you see, that's you see that that's no way you like, can change, you know, anything. You put you see the two population. You see one is a mutant, one is a wild type, and the mix now 50-50, and then you can see wild type. You see the genome like here. You purify DNA and then after few passage and then so again sequences again do you see the uh, you see one population took over another one so this is you see from this result pay us environment you see nutrient nutrition you know in in the micro environment make a lot of difference so if, if you have mutation inside of cancer and the rest you see in blood um, that could be completely different you see in blood you have a lot of nutrient in your glucose you don't need the mitochondria, and the probably you can you can survive. And the body you see in less inside the tumor, and like a colony formation, etc. Probably you need a, a better. And I have to tell you that you see another thing is kind of interesting. Is I do the same thing. You derive a high PSL. You see, which is you can use take a fiber blood cell, and then you in convert to embryo stem cell. Okay, a stem cell, and then so use. Use this technology, we found the same thing as you see what we in a colony uh, uh, formation. This is just tell you different culture medium, and then you can see this is a you know uh, cytochrome release. You can see uh, that you see the mutant cell 
can survive a much better than you see the uh, 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 wild type. You see, this is a pretty much a wild type. This is a mutant. This is a between. Okay, and uh, you can also see the increase of uh, INF, which is a apoptosis pathway for for that. And they so so what I try to do here, as I told you, you see that patient I show you, I took a tumor, right? I just sequenced the mitochondrial genome. That's not way to do it. Because you see that you when you take a tumor, you have a normal tissue. You have a, you see a lot of things lump there. And what I try to do is we try to do a, you see micro dissection. Um, you see use a uh, electro or you use a microscope do a micro dissection. You can catch exactly at least you see you eyeball and then you know this is a more like a malignant cell and like catch the cell and then do a sequence. And also I have a hypothesis. And then so previously I already report, okay, in your blood, in your blood you can you have a hundred percent of normal mitochondria, but you can develop the hundred percent of mutant of mitochondria genome. How can that happen? You know, this is a mitochondria, so you have a hundred and a thousand of them mitochondria. And you cannot have a mutation simultaneously. Because you see must have some mechanism either slightly or you see some mechanism to uh, to do that, and like I said, we know that tumor, uh, breast, if this is a breast cancer, you from normal duct to invasive carcinoma, you have multiple steps. And I would think about you see, we thought about it. maybe we should lo look for different stage, the percentage of a mutation of a mitochondrial genome, and then use a micro dissection way. You know, that would be the way to do. It. Um, and uh, so this is a pretty much I. My hypothesis, and then so maybe you see some of the mitochondria. First, they have advantage to survive. You see the replication, and then survive, and then so that would be, a, uh, I say, the two heat mechanism. And then so to do that, you know, mitochondria genome mutation, we develop very nice assay, which is to use nice gene sequence. And uh, I say you, I probably, you probably know if you use a traditional single sequence. If a mutation less than 20 percent, probably you cannot figure that. You miss it. You see, use next gene, uh, next gene uh, sequence. As I told you, we we been use this technology to uh, detect a mutation for 142 genes, and the lens are work pretty well. And then so we uh, we also use the same technology looking for mutation of mitochondrial genome. The my expectation is because you see that this is a very deep sequence. You sequence molecular hundred and a thousand times, you should be uh, able to count how many times you see the mutation, how many times is well type. And this is uh, indeed that we, we what have we found? You see, well, we first thing we had found you see the way how do you sure your assay is reliable. I have two different mitochondrial genomes, like a your mitochondrial genome and my mitochondrial genome. That's a significant difference. Okay, now these two mitochondrial genomes, I, I know that. 53 nucleotide difference. Okay, I want to lump them together, mix them, and the different percentage. And I see, can I detect the mutation of the the the, the, the percentage? And then for analysis, is very efficient. And then use this technology. We barcode each line. You can you can uh, sequence. What we did that was a 20 20. Uh, sample and then you have eight lines, so theoretically you can have a one run. You can sequence 160 mitochondrial genome, 160 sample. You see one run of you see that which can be finished even in a week or so. So that would be a very efficient way to do it. And I saw, so what we did, you see, well we have 20. We use one line and then we mix. You tackle different sample, uh, 20 sample, we run one in one lane, and we get cover which from 600 to 600 to 7,000. These 7,000 are so more like you see overlap part, you know, so most of them you see we get, get an average of about, you see, uh, uh, 1,700. That's very good, you see, you can, you can imagine that like, instead of read, you read the, the molecule 1,000 1,700 times. You can count how many mutations in that particular spot. And then so uh, the we, we did 
um, we have some division, we have some of, uh, you know, uh, missense mutation. And they use this technology, we are very effective identify if the mutation is more than 5%, every single one, no positive, no negative of the result. Okay, and then so that we can, if we go to 1%, and at that time, actually you see technology has been changed. And uh, since we published this paper, and they said we get a 90%, but you get some false positive. And they said 2%, so definitely you can do very well. So that's significant you improve the sensitivity. So in that case, even if you look at mutation of a tumor, even if you have some percentage of contamination, it's still okay. Because you see now, like uh, you've seen before, if you have a, okay, so that will give you a very good and uh, uh, a good uh, result. This is just to tell you all the reproducibility, all the data, verify what we, we found. And then, so what I really want to do here is to try to collaborate with people is uh, what I say the mutation, uh, many patients, your blood, your germline uh, mitochondrial genome is normal, right? You have a mutation in your, in your tumor. You, you might conjure, okay? Okay, you, it's pretty well known. You see, you, if you have mutation in tumor, some of your DNA is leaking to blood, okay? Maybe it's very small amount, but it's it going to be leaked to your, your blood. This is a very well document, in, you see, uh, because I'm a clinical genetics, very well document in pregnant woman. Okay, you're pregnant, right? Your, your baby, very few cells will get from your, your, your body, but your baby's DNA will come to your, your, your blood. So I can just taste your, that's the potential, taste your blood, and the look at, you see, do you, does your baby has a disease or not? So that's, you see, you don't have to, you do immunosynthesis, don't have to do it. So that's theoretically, you see, you can draw a pregnant woman's blood. There's, this should be same similar mechanism, you see, you have a tumor, and you lice, you some of the tumor cell will die, and you may release some of the, you see, the, the mutant uh, mitochondrial genome in your blood. You can use this one to, uh, as a diagnosis purpose, if you find a mutation, maybe you have some tumor somewhere. Or, and now as a pregno uh, prognosis, if you see, after surgery, after baby has a surgery, okay, you're supposed to remove all tumor. Well, you should, uh, you see, the, the low, you see, my mutant mitochondrial genome should be much lower than you see the, you, you pre, before your surgery. And if the tumor come back, and then your load will come back. You, you mutant mitochondrial, that's something I, I'm interested to do. And to do that, I will need, you see, a pretty much a fresh, uh, not, not fresh, frozen, frozen, you know, um, uh, tissue, which I can do a make, uh, you could, could di dissection, and I can do laser catch for the, uh, you see, the malignant cell, and I will find a mutation, and I use the same patient serum. Okay, this technology being used for other cancer, you see, like a lung cancer, you see, EGFR mutation, right? Probably everyone knows EGFR mutation. This is a somatic mutation, only mutated in tumor. Okay, you can monitor, you see, the, you can detect the EGF mutation in your blood. And then, so, first thing, make a diagnosis. Secondly, monitor prognosis. I get to you, I will, this is what I would like to use to, you see, um, you see that, I think that's exactly what a, uh, NCI is looking for a lab, a lab run. You see, can we develop some marker and the thing, so that, that the uh, the brand is really more very specific for mitochondria, and they want to develop mitochondria as a mark, biomarker for for uh, uh, the cancer diagnosis and the prognosis. And the next, so of course, you see, we we try to develop a different methodology. How can you develop? How can you sensitively detect and mut mutating the mitochondrial genome? Because you see, in that blood, because you have you see majority of them is well type. The only small amount of, uh, you see, uh, mitochondrial genome, which is uh, mutated, and uh, we have a different way, and uh, you can, for example, do arm PCR. We are trying to develop, we try to validate if we form, develop, uh, you see, primer as a loop, and uh, do we increase the specificity, and uh, not have a pos false positive. And uh, so this is a, something we, we are doing in lab. And like so, uh, finally, I want to thank people. And like so, many uh, 
uh, collaborate he, here. And I saw uh, the project you see for uh, TBS3 Ready Start for one of a poster, wonderful poster, Tomasa, and uh, followed by a graduate student. And they, um, uh, actually, uh, um, transgender mouse was done by uh, uh, Jing Lu. And then I didn't have a time to talk about TBS3 and uh, uh, Embrace Stem Cell, which is mainly uh, done by uh, Terranate. And uh, we, are, we are working, uh, Mary Alice is working on, uh, you know, 142 gene uh, mutation with uh, next gene sequence. And then the collaboration and uh, being, um, how they being very helpful to provide, you see, a sample for the cancer research paper we published, Cancer Research, and which is the first time documented TBS3 uh, over expression and social with uh, cancer, and I saw, uh, so uh, uh, you know, Joe Gray was uh, another collaborate working in uh, cell life. And I want to thank you uh, for your attention.